engaging the community since 1970. This is WIS Awareness. Good morning and thank you for joining us for Awareness. I'm your host, Megan Norman. Sickle cell is a disease with no cure. It's an inherited lifelong disorder affecting the red blood cells that can cause organ damage. Dennis Littles was diagnosed with the disease when he was five years old. Dennis, you are now 33, so you've been living with the disease for quite some time. Tell our viewers exactly what sickle cell disease is. Okay. Sickle cell disease is um, normally a generic African-American disease that's very painful. Um, it runs in the African-American co um, community, excuse me. And it affects the red blood cells in yes, particular. Yes, it, it, well, what it does is the white blood cells attacks the red blood cells. Mm -hmm. And that what causes a sickle cell patient to go into a sickle cell crisis. When you are in a sickle cell crisis, you are um, in need of a blood transfusion, um, lots and lots and lots of fluids. Um, to treat this painful disease, um, they treat it along with um, medications called hydroxyurea, and that is to keep your blood count at a stable level. Um, they also have um, the pain medication to help control that the pains. Well, let me ask you about these crises. How often does one or do you experience a crisis? Well, that's a little hard to say because of the simple fact that once we go into a crisis, the weather can also play a big role. It could be too hot, it could be too cold. And well, describe a crisis for me. How painful is one? Well, a, a painful crisis is like this. Um, I had some friends that have sickle cell, and they have said that they would rather go back through childbirth than to have a sickle cell crisis. Really? Yes, it's very painful. Now, are you able to work? Are, are patients typically able to? I'm sure the disease uh, differs from patient to patient, but how, how is life different? How is your lifestyle compromised by living with this painful disease? Well, it's, it's very complicated because you want to do things like other people. You want to go out, you want to have fun, you want to participate in different things. Um, my childhood, I wanted to play basketball, and I did at one point, but I ended up going to a crisis and I mm -hmm. can no longer Couldn't. play basketball. Um, so after that, then it's, it's very difficult and dealing with sickle cell. And you talked about some of the treatments, including blood transfusions. Where do you, you live in Sumter, so where do you have to go to get your treatment and get some support? How far do you have to drive? I have to drive to Charleston. Um, once a month. I have to come here to Columbia twice a week to receive my treatments. So how would quality of life be improved for you? The quality of life would be improved for me to see a better, how can I say that? If you had more access to localized treatment and support mm -hmm. centers, like if there was a center in Sumter, which I know you're trying to work on creating, yes. would, would that help? Would that help to improve your quality of life? Yes, that would help a lot. How, that would help. How would it help? Well, with the, um, the driving, like going back and forth to um, Charleston, which is two hours away from Sumter, mm -hmm. and coming here to Columbia, which is almost like 45 minutes. Right. So that, that would help out a lot. And then it won't, it won't only benefit me, it will also benefit um, the sickle cell patients in Sumter and to the ones that's in the community to come in right. to learn and read more about sickle cell disease and how it affects the organs, the vital organs and the body. And you have a vision where you want to create an infusion center yes. in Sumter. So yes. tell me about your work in that. Well, my work in that is I started my own company, which is the Bread of Life Community Outreach. And what is that? It's to help those with sickle cell. And um, we are, are having a 2015 benefit program at Crestwood High School, Saturday, September the 5th. Um, doors open at five, program starts at six. Tickets are 10 in advance and $15 at the door. And this benefit concert is to go toward the infusion center that you're hoping to create yes, at Sumter? Yes, ma'am. And if people would like to donate to help patients like you and other patients, how can they do so? You can go to any Wells Fargo and go and ask that you would like to donate to the Bread of Life Community Outreach for Sickle Cell. And that's how they can donate to help 
with this um, worthy cause. Well, Dennis, thank you so much for sharing your story about how you deal with sickle cell on a daily basis, and we hope to keep in touch with you to see how this benefit concert goes. Thank you. There are many others like Dennis living with sickle cell disease every day. Still to come on Awareness, a chance to walk a mile or two in their shoes. Welcome back to Awareness. Close to 100,000 Americans are affected by sickle cell every year. Some have championed the cause by educating others. One of those crusaders is Yvonne Donald, who has been fighting to erase the stigma associated with sickle cell disease. Sickle cell disease is actually one of the most misunderstood diseases, I would say, on the face of the earth. Yvonne Donald always thought she'd be a teacher. I want to try to bring this home to you a little bit. But it turns out she's more of a crusader educating everyone who'll listen about a painful, debilitating disease that's often misunderstood. The pain with sickle cell disease is real. It's real. And it's prevalent. And it's persistent. During presentations like this one at Columbia High, you can hear Yvonne's passion for erasing the stigma of sickle cell. I would think one of the biggest myths is that it's isolated only to the African American community. Sickle cell disease can strike any ethnicity, including Caucasians. And replacing it with the facts. But she doesn't just talk the talk. Walk the sickle cell. She walks the walk. Under Yvonne's leadership, the annual sickle cell walk has grown every year, raising money and awareness. As deputy director of the James R. Clark Memorial Sickle Cell Foundation, this is more than a job for Yvonne, it's her ministry. I've been sick before, Judy. I'm a 20-year breast cancer survivor. So I know what it is to be sick. And I can relate to the pain um, that these clients undergo and endure on a daily basis. And she's determined to make sure others understand it too. And I know we hear a lot about um, diabetes, um, breast cancer, and um, heart disease. But sickle cell disease is every bit as important and it deserves the attention. Money raised at the walk and other events throughout the year fund scholarships to allow college-bound students to overcome sickle cell and fulfill their dreams. It's that 50% chance that the child will have traits. Every time Yvonne has a chance to talk with young people, it gives her hope about inspiring them to pursue a life of public service and maybe even more. Maybe we can ignite a little fire that some of them will pursue um, a medical field. Um, we need doctors, we need nurses, um, especially we need physicians to help um, treat individual sickle cell disease and hopefully one day researchers to find a cure. Until that cure comes, Yvonne will be a champion for the cause. Yvonne Donald with me now. Now Yvonne, when did raising awareness for this debilitating disease become your calling? I started working at the foundation about 17 years ago, and I like to tell the story that I am, in October, I'll be a 22-year breast cancer survivor. Wow, congratulations, that's incredible. Yes, and I know what it is to be sick. Mm. I know what it is to be in pain. I know what it is to be in a debilitating situation yes. and not being able to help myself. And I believe that um, my survivorship coupled very nicely with the pain that's associated mm -hmm. with sickle cell disease and the cause and the struggle that so many of them um, face on a daily, to day, a daily basis because right. I, I know what it is to be sick. Right. So I can really, I can feel their pain. I understand, I understand the struggle of being sick. Yeah. How many here in South Carolina are going through that pain right now of sickle cell? Well, it's estimated that about 4,500 individuals here in South Carolina are living daily with sickle cell disease. And let's break it down for our viewers. Exactly what are they going through? What does sickle cell look like? What happens? Sickle cell disease is a disease of the red blood cell. Normal red blood cells are nice and round, supple, and they easily slip through the tiny mm -hmm. arteries in the body. But individuals with sickle cell disease have cells that are sickle shaped. They're crescent shaped, shaped like a banana. And when they try to travel through the tiny arteries in the body, they get trapped. Mm -hmm. And this cuts off vital oxygen and circulation of blood and, and oxygen throughout the body. And, and can it, that lead to organ failure in some cases? It can lead to organ failure. The hallmark of this disease is pain. Mm -hmm. um, the pain that's associated with sickle cell disease is excruciating, but it cuts off that circulation to um, the cells, tissues, and organ in the bodies. And yes, it can cause organ damage, kidney failure. It can damage the liver. 
um, the spleen is affected. Um, it affects nearly every major organ in the body. And, and how did this trait come to be? How does someone get born with sickle cell? Well, it's an inherited disease. And many people don't know the history behind it, but actually the trait actually evolved many, many, many generations ago in areas where malaria malaria was, was highly, the incidence of malaria was, was very high. Mm -hmm. And if you trace the history of sickle cell disease and, and the high prevalence, it's in those areas that are close to the equator, mm -hmm. um, um, areas in the Mediterranean. And what all of these countries have in common is that they were they had high incidences of malaria. Mm -hmm. And the trait was actually a gene mutation that occurred to protect people who lived mm -hmm. in these areas against malaria. However, what happened is as populations grew, as, as people migrated, and, and when more and more individuals with the trait began having children together, with each pregnancy, mm -hmm. it's a 25% chance that that child will have full-blown sickle cell disease. If both parents have the trait? If both have parents have the trait. Both parents have to have the trait for the disease to occur. If an individual with just the trait has a child with someone else who does not have sickle cell trait, mm -hmm. there's only a 50-50 chance that the child will have trait or will not have trait. Okay. But the incidence of sickle cell disease can only occur with two okay. parents who have okay. the trait. Now, you are the deputy director of the James R. Clark Memorial Sickle Cell Foundation. So what is that foundation all about? Well, our foundation is all about being a support system for our clients with sickle cell disease. We also uh, focus heavily on genetic testing, community education, community outreach. Um, our upcoming walk is one of those instances where we're trying to be a support system for our, our, our clients mm -hmm. in that we're trying to raise funds for our scholarship for our young people with sickle cell disease to, to pursue their dreams right. of higher education. And don't let the disease get in the way. And don't let the disease get in the way. Because it does sometimes. I can it only does. imagine with the pain. So what, what is a, a crisis like for, for somebody and, and how can that hamper their lifestyle? Well, first of all, <clears throat> a crisis is excruciating pain. It involves pain. And as I said earlier, pain is the hallmark of this disease. Mm -hmm. But a pain crisis can land someone in the hospital for two to three weeks, wow. sometimes three to four to five times a year. So imagine the difficulty. Keeping um, a job. Keeping a job, being gainfully employed. Imagine the difficulty that some of our clients face in trying to go to school. And, and school absences, absentees, right. that type thing. Right. So um, we're all about trying to give these kids a fighting chance. Right. We want them to survive. And do you provide other support, like for bill payments or pharmaceutical bills or anything like that? Yes, we do have um, a program in place where we provide emergency um, assistance for our clients when it comes down to pharmaceuticals and energy assistance. Mm -hmm. We have annual programs throughout the year. Um, after our walk, we'll be going right into our sickle cell retreat that we, we partner with Palmetto Health. That's a full day of family fun, mm -hmm. education at, at Saluda Shoals for our clients. After October, we'll be going straight into our Giving Tree project. <laughs> you just and, stay busy. Yes, we do. <laughs> and we'll be providing Christmas toys for oh, our children with great. sickle cell disease and their siblings. What would you say to viewers out there who don't experience the pain of sickle cell, who don't really understand the disease, what would you say to them to make them care, make them understand, and maybe come out to a walk and help support? I would say imagine having a migraine headache that's maybe doubled or tripled um, in pain, and or having a toothache that's so terrible and horrific that you've ever had a toothache you just want to hit your head, set, head up against a wall? I mean, really. That lands you in the hospital. Yes, sometimes. I mean, well, yes, well, but, but the, it's just the pain that's, mm -hmm. that's so severe yeah. and it's hard. That pain is complicated, it's often misunderstood. But if you think about our pharmaceuticals, our drug stores, we have rows and rows of, mm -hmm. of, of owls with pain medication. Mm -hmm. And when we're in pain, we, we, we want relief. Right. Individuals with sickle cell disease are no different. Right. And this pain is much more severe right. And it's much more persistent. And they and can't intense. always find that relief. And they can't always find that relief, except through very heavy narcotics. Right, right. 
Or blood transfusions? Uh, blood transfusions, and that is essential. Mm -hmm. um, the Red Cross is, is one of our longtime partners, mm -hmm. and um, they're also one of our sponsors um, for our upcoming walk, but the blood transfusions are essential to keeping our clients alive, wow. and giving blood is so very important. Very important of it's course. very important. Well, let's talk about the walk. It's happening on September 12th. September a Saturday. Yes. So tell us a little bit about the walk. Well, we're excited. This is our 10th year. It's a commemorative year. We're um, Sheriff Leon Lott is going to be our walk ambassador. And Sheriff Leon Lott um, and his staff, they've been longtime supporters of Sickle Cell. They've, they've done um, fundraisers. One, t one year they did a, a kickball fundraiser for Sickle Cell. They support our giving tree. And this year, um, Sheriff Lott, and um, he's bringing out a lot of his men along with him Good. and he's got some other surprises that he's bringing along Good. with him but he's coming out in full force to support this effort and we're just so honored to, and extremely happy to have him on board because we're hoping that his presence will help garner even a right. higher right. level of awareness mm -hmm. and participation in, in our walk for this year. And we should give a quick shout out to Columbia High School because their Penny Drive oh, yes. helped to support the foundation and yes. the walk. Yes, it did. Um, the Academy, the Finance Academy um, had a Penny, penny Drive last year and um, as a result of that Penny Drive um, we were able to educate the young people at Columbia High about sickle cell disease. Um, they raised over 2,000 coins, pennies, for, for sickle that cell. Is great. I Wasn't that wonderful? Yes. It was just wonderful. And it's good to start at a young age to get yes. them aware and educated. And get them on board with public yes. service yes. because it can make a difference in their future. We know you're a champion for that. Well, Yvonne, thank you for all the hard work that you do. Thank you so much for having me. We we'll appreciate it. When awareness returns, sickle cell has a unique set of challenges for a person from the day he or she is born. A small step you can take that can make a huge difference in their lives. Welcome back to Awareness. While there is no cure for sickle cell, there is treatment. One option for pain management is regular blood transfusions. That, of course, creates a constant need for blood. And that is where the American Red Cross comes in. Janice Bailey is here from the Columbia chapter of the Red Cross. Thanks for being with us this Thanks morning. Thanks for having us. So we know the need for blood is great, especially in the summertime, but why is, it, why is there a particularly strong need for sickle cell patients? Well, of course, you know, having a blood transfusion gives them a sense of comfort. Right. Um, when they're going through a crisis. So we definitely need the blood transfusion, but we also need the blood in order to do that. And we know the transfusion helps to flush out, so to speak, the, the sickle-shaped red blood cells. So it does give some relief for, for pain management for these patients. Yes. So what type of blood is ideal? The type of blood is ideal for sickle cell patients are African Americans. Okay. blood. Um, we are more likely the types that we need, which are O and B. And so for um, sickle cell patients who are mainly African Americans, it's just ideal for us to be able to donate. Right. Now there are some who cannot donate for this particular yes. cause. Yes. So if you are um, a person that have the sickle cell disease, of course you cannot donate. But if you have the trait, you can still donate. Right. And there mm -hmm. is a big difference between having the trait and having the disease. So it if you is. have the trait, you can donate. And what are some other criteria for being able to donate blood in general? Of course, you got to be the right height. You have to wear um, the weight. Um, of course, want you in best health as possible. Of course, there are some travel restrictions. So if we'll do all that processing when you get there to ask you a number of questions. And how old do you have to be? Well, if you're 16, you got to have a parent's mm -hmm. um, signature in order for you to donate. But if you're 18, you can donate. And is there any age that's too old to donate blood? There's <laughs> never an age too old to donate, not at all. And how often can someone donate blood? You can donate every 56 days. And I know for the African American population, they worry about, okay, I'm taking certain medication, maybe right. for diabetes or hypertension. As long as those things are under control, you can still donate. Mm -hmm. And I know there are some fears of, I'm afraid of needles right. and all of those things. And those are, um, we understand those things, right. those anxieties. Yeah, right, so, right. but we will walk you through the process. We have um, great nurses there that will help you doing your first time donation. But once you do it the first time, you're like, oh. It? Right, it's pretty simple. That's mm -hmm. how I felt because it was my first time a few weeks back, and okay. I was a little apprehensive. But I realized that hey, I can save a life you can. by doing this, and it doesn't take that long. It took me like maybe 10, 15 minutes, so it wasn't that time-consuming whatsoever. It was not, and we're developing a rapid pass where you can answer a lot of questions at home. So mm -hmm. when you get there, you'll answer just a few more. But you can be right. finished with the donor 
donation process with less than an hour and you've saved a life right. and so that's priceless. And talk a little bit more about the need because you guys are donating to hospitals all the time or giving all to hospitals. Mm -hmm. How frequent? Um, we, of course, each hospital will get a delivery basically every day. So we have blood drives every single day, maybe three and four times a day in different locations. So there's a constant need. You need to replenish that supply because it's depleted yes, almost it's every depleted. day. You can't. Quickly. I always look at blood as if I want a pair of jeans, I can go to the store and buy those jeans. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in need of blood, you can't and go buy it. You can't buy it. Can't and if no it. one donates it, right. it's not there. Right. So you never want to be that physician right. to tell a parent or a client or patient. Sorry, we can't help you because we, we can't blood. help you. It's not there. And you're right. going to look like, what do you mean? Right. Nobody walked through the door and right. donated. And you know, in some cases, you hear about people who, if they're going to go into surgery, they donate ahead of time for themselves. But sickle cell patients can't do that they for themselves. Can't do that. They need other people. They do. So, really good information, Janice. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for having us. Stay with us. We'll be right back with a final thought. Sickle cell is a disease that must be managed for life. The physical and emotional challenges associated with the disease can take an immense toll on the patients and the caregivers. Get educated and consider participating in the walks or donating blood to help others better cope with this debilitating disease. If you're living with sickle cell or you're an advocate for awareness, go to our Awareness Facebook page. You can also share your stories by using the hashtag Awareness10 on social media. I'd like to thank all of our guests this morning. Until next time, I'm Megan Norman. This is Awareness.